Okay, welcome back. Once again, my name is Jonathan Sova, a level design student at the Guildhall at SMU. This is part two of my basic tutorial of Kismet, using the May 2011 version of UDK. Now, so far, we have a working light switch attached to a point light toggleable. Uh, but right now, anybody can walk up to this light switch and use it. Um, and I want to make it a little bit more exclusive. I want to make sure that someone has a key before they can use this. So for now, let's hop back into Kismet. And I'm going to reorganize this a little bit. Drag these down here. Make some extra room. So, so far, we've learned how to use events, actions, and variables. Uh, but right now, we're going to add the fourth pillar of Kismet, which is conditions. And conditions are the eyes and ears of Kismet. And they'll, they'll, they basically look at the world or any variables you have, and uh, they, it helps Kismet to make a decision about what to do. Uh, so we want to make a comparison of a Boolean variable. And if you don't have any programming experience, a Boolean variable uh, is just true or false, yes or no. It's kind of like an on-off switch in itself. So we're going to bring this in. And right now, our trigger, if you use it, it goes straight to toggling the light on or off. And we want to make it a little bit more indirect. So we're going to delete this arrow for now with Alt-click. And we're going to drag this Boolean comparison in here. And so now, when the light switch is used, we're going to come here first. And we need a new Boolean variable. So you can right click on that box and do new, new Boolean variable. And the default value is always false. Now, for our purposes, we're going to say false uh, means you don't have the key. And true, let's say you do have the key. So if, if it's true and you do have the key, it, t it passes the test. And it's fine. We can let the player toggle the light on and off. But if it's false, and you do not have the key, let's, uh, let's put out a message. And with, for that, we can do new action down here to miscellaneous and log. So if it's false, we'll come here. And we want to give the player a message. Uh, instead of leaving them in the dark, we want to tell them, hey, you need a key. So for log, uh, it can output a, a bunch of things. It could be numbers or it could be you know words. We want to put out words. So we're going to expose a variable basically telling the log, hey, put out this string. So we come here, new string variable, right click. And here under the string value under properties, we can type in a message. So let's say you need a key. Enter. So we can test this out in game right now. So I'll X out of here. Play from here. And let's try our trigger. Oh, we need a key. So, let's create a key. The first step of adding our new key will be just like before, uh, right-clicking on the floor and doing Add Actor, Add Trigger. Now, this trigger is going to act a little bit differently from the one we made before. Uh, instead of making the player walk up and activate it by pressing E, I'd like this, this key to be collectible just by walking over it, kind of simulating the appearance of an inventory system. Uh, so let's hop back into Kismet. And since we have the trigger selected, we can go ahead and right click and do a new event. And instead of used this time, we'll do touch right here. Now we also need to define the instigator uh, because the trigger is basically asking, okay, touched, but touched by who? So we're going to make a new variable that is player defined. So now, whenever any player touches this trigger, it's activated. Uh, also, what should happen when they touch the trigger? Uh, we need them to be able to access this light switch, and the thing that, that, that is keeping them from doing that is this Boolean v value being false. Uh, so what we need to do is create a new action. But before then, uh, as, as your Kismet projects grow, you may be scrolling through your nodes and find something that you made days or even weeks ago and wonder, what was that? Like this, this false, you may, you may have no idea. Uh, as time passes, what this actually stood for. So it's, it's often a good practice to add comments to your nodes. Like for example, in this Boolean comparison, I can add a comment here saying, does the player have the key? 
and now this will give me a nice little reminder, or uh, if someone else is going to work on this project, they'll also have a, a decent grasp of, of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So let's go back down here to my trigger. And what we want to do is we want to change this from false to true when players pick up the key. So we're going to make an action. And we want to set a variable, and we want to set a Boolean variable here. Whenever players touch this trigger, it's going to come here. And the target of this value set is going to be here. We also need to define the value. Is it going to be changed to true or false? So here under value, we can right click and say create new Boolean variable. And again, the default value for any new Boolean variable is false. So we want to come down here to properties. And here where it says value, uh, in programming terms, 0 is false and 1 is true. So we want to change this from 0 to 1. And up here you can see this change from false to true. Uh, now this will work. So we can hop out of here. Hopefully it'll work. And once again, uh, we need to change this trigger to be visible in game so we can walk over it without grasping around in the dark. So well, let's try it out. So here's our light switch. You need a key. Let's try walking over our key. And now we can turn the lights on and off, which is cool. Uh, but we can add a little bit more polish to this. So let's give this key a visible, uh, tangible feel. And to do that, we're going to go into the content browser. And you can pick just about any static mesh you want. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go with this uh, Berserk pickup here. Uh, and I'm going to add it into the game. With it selected, you can right click. And instead of adding a static mesh, uh, as, as you might normally do, uh, what I'm going to do is add it as an interp actor, which is basically a, a dynamic mesh that can be moved or deleted and things like that. So I'm going to add that in here. And I'm going to put this right on top of where my trigger is. And so now, with this, uh, let's go into Kismet again. And I'm going to create a new object variable with this interpret actor. So once uh, we pick up the, the key, it shouldn't be there anymore, right? So we want to destroy this actor as, as soon as we, as we pick it up, quote unquote. Uh, so we're going to do an action that affects an actor, and we want to destroy it. So we can go from boolean out into here, and the target is going to be the key. Now let's give this a try in game. And since we know where the trigger is now, we can select our key trigger again, come to F4, and hide it. Now let's give this a shot. Play from here. You can see our light switch, our key. Let's walk into it. And you can see it's gone. Now let's try to turn on the, uh, the light switch here. And it works. Very cool. And now you can also add uh, some logs uh, to, to the key action as well if you'd like to notify the player, hey, you picked up the key. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a little bit more confidence in uh, tinkering around with Kismet and trying to find the, all the cool things you can do with it. I highly recommend you check out the UDK wiki online. Uh, it has a lot of good information. Uh, that's one of the greatest things about UDK is just the sheer amount of documentation available. Uh, so good luck, and thanks for watching.